want it for yourself! Come on, Baggins! Do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. I am not trying to rob you. What a beautiful young woman you've become. Aww. Welcome to D6 Damage and our ongoing coverage of the Pathfinder playtest. Today I'm looking at casters, and I'm going to try and figure out if they're less powerful, more powerful, or about the same as the original Pathfinder. I'm going to be looking at three major categories. First off, economy. These are the actions you can perform in terms of casting spells on your turn. Second, I'm going to look at effect. This is how powerful your spells are and what kind of actions you can expect out of them. Finally, I'm going to look at reserve. This is how many times you can cast spells during the day. All right, let's jump right into economy. Most spells require two actions on your turn, a verbal action and a somatic action. This is essentially the same as in Pathfinder, which required a standard action for most spells. Some spells, however, can be performed as free actions or reactions, such as Death's Call and Featherfall, both of those are reactions, and Sudden Shift. This is both a power and a free action. Also, some spells only require one action. These are spells like Shield, Hurling Stone, and Inspire Courage. Spells like these give you more things that you can do on your turn. So I'm going to say, because of how the Pathfinder playtest breaks up your actions on your turn, the action economy is pretty much the same as the original Pathfinder, and in certain ways it's actually better. Now let's move on to effect. This is probably one of the bigger changes from the original Pathfinder because we're dealing with some new concepts and some new things you need to take into account when picking your spells and picking which ones you want to use in a given situation. Let's start with a damage comparison. We're going to be comparing Shocking Grasp from the original Pathfinder and Shocking Grasp from the Pathfinder playtest. In both of them, Shocking Grasp is a level 1 spell. In the original Pathfinder, Shocking Grasp did 1d6 damage per caster level, maxing out at 5d6. Once you would hit 5th caster level, on kind of an average roll, you're going to get about 15 or so points of damage if you do really poorly in the low double digits. However, in Pathfinder 2, you need to think about a concept called heightening. Essentially, what this means is that you're going to be preparing your Shocking Grasp as a higher level spell. This increases the amount of power you get out of it. Starting at level 1, Shocking Grasp does 1d12 damage. Once you can prepare second level spells, you can bump that to 2d12 damage. Third level spells, that's 3d12, and so on. The amount of damage you're going to get out of Shocking Grasp is not only competitive with the original version of the spell, it actually outstrips it, especially at higher spell levels. But that being said, you're going to need to pick and choose carefully which spells you're going to heighten. Heightening basically means that your higher level spell slots are always going to be a dilemma for what you want to prepare. Because as you increase in level, you're going to get more spells, and those are going to have a limited number of positions that we'll get into later. It's also worth noting that the Pathfinder playtest likes to use D12s as opposed to D6s. This means that the damage spread is going to be wider. You're either going to get lower numbers or higher numbers as opposed to sort of being in the middle of the bell curve, which is what you get with the larger number of D6s. All right, now I want to talk about the mitigation scale that Pathfinder playtest uses. Essentially what this means is you get different effects from successes, critical successes, failures, and critical failures. For certain spells, the mitigation scale is a great thing to have. These are usually the ones that are basically pass-fail 
in the original Pathfinder. With this new scale, even if the target succeeds on their will save or their fort save or whatever, you're still getting some effect out of the spell and it's not like it was a complete waste. Now let's talk about concentration and duration. Maintaining a concentration spell requires an action. Also, it's important to know that if you take damage while concentrating, or casting a spell for that matter, and the damage you take equals or exceeds your level, the spell effect ends, or just doesn't go off. Also, certain spells, like Fly and Black Tentacles, have had their duration shortened. Usually the duration can be increased by heightening. Okay, so in conclusion on effect, individual spell effects are more or less like they were in the original Pathfinder. However, in order to get the most out of your spells, heightening them is required. So this means that you're always going to be picking and choosing what goes in the highest level slots. Finally, let's look at your reserves. This is where cantrips are going to be really, really important, much like in 5th edition. Contrips are very powerful in the Pathfinder playtest. They have high damage potential, and you can cast them over and over again, so you're never left without a recourse. And it's important to know that contrips are automatically heightened to their maximum level. Also, class features, like the wizard's ability to drain focus, and additional spell slots per level that they get from their school, and the sorcerer bloodline spells, mean that you have additional spells that you can cast. However, the total number of spells you get per level is lower, and there are no bonus spells, like there were in the original Pathfinder. The final reserve of power that you're going to have access to are your, well, powers. Powers function a little bit differently than regular spells. You have an entirely separate pool that you cast from. You also can't learn powers like regular spells. You get them mostly from class features and feats. So the conclusion I'm drawn to from the reserves that you have access to in the Pathfinder playtest is that because of heightening, you have a limited number of the most powerful effects that you can give off as a caster. Unlike in the original Pathfinder, where your first level spells were some of the most important things you had, and they were still competitive even into late game because you had so many of them, now you need to really focus on the highest level stuff that you can do. And I understand Paizo's decision on this one from a game mastering perspective. You don't want to give people these more powerful spells and have them still be spamming the lower level stuff even against the bigger monsters that are intended to require more of an oomph to defeat. But because of the new system, you're not going to have a bunch of maxed out fireballs, a bunch of maxed out scorching rays, and a bunch of maxed out shocks. Because of this limitation, I think that casters in the Pathfinder playtest are a little bit watered down from how they were in the original game. But on the other hand, it's harder to find yourself really exhausted. You're always going to have your contrips to back you up. I think a lot of it is going to come down to personal playstyle. If you like how the original Pathfinder gave you those really battlefield reshaping spell effects, and by the time you hit higher level, you could drop multiple ones per combat and still have a lot left in reserve, but run the risk of actually running out. I think that the original Pathfinder is going to be more what you want. But if you want to play something that is a little more forgiving and you can sit in the back and be like spamming Ray of Frost, Ray of Frost over and over again and not really dip into your best stuff until that big fight, then the Pathfinder playtest is more your speed. Thank you for watching this D6 Damage Pathfinder playtest analysis. If you're interested... In more character builds and class guides for Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons, check us out right here on YouTube. Yeah.